LED lamps are economical, relatively inexpensive, and in theory have a very long service life, but in practice, everything could be different. Because of poor quality power supplies which may be in the LED lamp, they could have a relatively short life. Both the power sources and the LEDs can fail. In some cases, the repair is inadvisable, since buying a new one is cheaper. But sometimes a malfunction can be associated with a failure of just one or several LEDs. Devices, which are built on the basis of the matrix, could be repaired only by the replacement of the matrix. In other cases, you can find and replace the faulty LED. They can be checked with the help of multimeter or with a power source and the resistor, which will limit the current. In modern LED lamps, LEDs are connected in series in parallel, and it takes a long time to check each LED separately. Our Chinese friends have long been selling devices specifically for this purpose. Such devices provide high output voltage and low current, which allows you to find a faulty LED in a line in a couple of seconds. But these devices aren't cheap, so I decided to create my own version of a similar device, and in addition, it will be portable. Such a thing will be useful for repairmen because it can be used to repair LED backlighting of monitors and LED strips with any number of series connected LEDs. The presented device provides a constant voltage of about 320 volts and an insignificant current at the output. The device hasn't connection with the mains and is completely safe even if you touch the high voltage contacts during operation. It allows you to check the circuit of more than 100 series connected LEDs, that is, it isn't enough for any lamp. How does it work? On the basis of the timer NE555 is assembled a generator of rectangular pulses. The frequency of the generator is about 20 kHz. The signal from the timer output goes to the gate of the high voltage field effect transistor and opens it. Through transistor the choke will connect to the power source. At this stage, energy is pumped into the choke. Next the transistor closes. The choke gives up the previously accumulated energy in the form of a surge voltage, which is 10 times higher than the supply voltage. This voltage is rectified and accumulated in a high-voltage electrolytic capacitor. The DC-DC converter is an ordinary booster without feedback, that is, the output voltage isn't stabilized and depends on the supply voltage and load power. The device is assembled on a small printed circuit board. It can be downloaded with the general archive in the description below the video. You can order PCBs of any complexity and size in the company GLC. Now all your boards will be made within 24 hours and the quality will be at the same level. You can find a link to the company's website and detailed video from the GLC factory in the description below the video. At idle, the voltage on the capacitor will increase, which will lead to its breakdown. Therefore, a load resistor is added to the circuit. The same resistor discharges the capacitor after the power is turned off. There is another resistor on the board. It is current limiting. If we connect the tested LED without this resistor, the voltage from the capacitor will instantly go to the diode and burn crystal. The resistor is selected to limit the current to 5 mA. This value is safe for any LED. When connecting an LED or a line of LEDs, the output voltage of the converter decreases to the required value, which is equal to the sum of the voltage drop across all LEDs. In other words, the LEDs themselves are the load and the stabilizing link. About components of the circuit, with the timer 555 I think there will be no problems, a standard circuit is used. The field effect transistor must be a high voltage N channel. I have an IRF830 on the board, but I advise 2N60, 4N60 transistors, they have more voltage reserve. The current isn't so important for our circuit.
The choke is wound on a ferry dumbbell with 0.15 mm wire. The inductance is about 1000 microhenry. You can wind on the rings of powered iron or ferret rod. As already said, the output voltage of the converter depends on the input. With a supply voltage of 6 volts, the output is about 320 volts. But at 8 volts at the input, the output is more than 400 volts. The voltage also depends on the inductance of the choke. The greater the inductance, the greater the voltage. I added a 6 volt linear regulator to the circuit, so the output voltage will be more or less stable regardless of the battery's discharge. I built it on LM317, but it is possible to use 7806 microcircuit. The no load current of the converter is about 80 mA, because at the output we have a load resistor. I added a 6 volt linear regulator to the circuit, so the output voltage will be more or less stable regardless of the battery's discharge. With all this in mind, a conventional 9 volt battery can continuously operate for 2 or 3 hours and alkaline ones much more, so that even with the active use of the device the battery will work for a long time. The finished device inserts in any suitable box. For convenience I put a couple of terminals. To the output of the converter an analog voltmeter is connected. It was taken from a voltage regulator. In these voltmeters there is one rectifying diode and, in principle, it needs to be replaced with a jumper. But I don't need very accurate readings and the voltmeter itself isn't super precise. With it I can visually understand what the voltage drop across the line of LEDs is. Of course the switch was also added and that's all. As a result we get a finished device which will definitely help out in the repair of LED lamps. A link to the project archive with a printed circuit board and other information, including links to ready-made devices of a similar type, can be found in the description. Please don't forget to rate this video and subscribe to our group of electronics. The link is also in the description. Now I say goodbye. Until next meeting, with you was Kassian TV.